Why do you even need a milkometer? Can't you just measure with your hand? Paul here is a professional barista, meaning he's been paid to make coffee. <laughs> he's a pro. So let's assume for a second <laughs> that he can do things that we amateurs cannot. The problem I have is I don't know what, what 50, 55, 60 Celsius feels like. So that's the first problem. It turns out that if you go over 65, you alter the taste of the milk, it, it tastes consistently different, and if you put really hot milk on coffee, you ruin the flavor. And there's this narrow band, and you can see it here, 60, 65, 70. 70 being the absolute, that's when people want an extra hot latte. Not recommended. <laughs> the general band is around 60 Celsius. That's what people want their hot milk drinks to be at. And if you serve them a 50 Celsius drink, they're going to say it's too cool. So the way that people tell with their hand is that 50 Celsius is the point at which your hand starts to hurt. Essentially, you wait till the hand hurts, and then you start counting down a few seconds, and then you stop, or you tap. It's not a very accurate way, and it's especially not an accurate way if you're an amateur. A pro might be better at it. I've been kind of a guy who complains at cafes. <laughs> I bring one of these in to my local cafe that makes great coffee, but inconsistent milk temperature. And I dip it in and I say, it's 50 today, or 68 today. Don't be me. But nonetheless, it's a good thing to have consistent milk temperature. It, it, it really is part of the, the beverage experience. The main reason I wanted this, and I'm the one who drove having this product, is because I was making milk that was varying temperatures. Did you ever in your career as a professional get a thermometer out and test yourself? No, like the, the standard <laughs> way we tested was actually taste the coffee. Okay. We generally use ceramic cups. Mm -hmm. So what that means is for your milk temperatures, you generally have to go on the higher end to make sure what you're drinking is roughly around the temperature that the guests are wanting. But it is slightly a compromise because you are on the upper threshold of how hot you can steam the milk. That's in an excellent point because ceramic cups drop your milk temperature by about 10 to 15 degrees, depending on how preheated they are. Paper cup does not. The cardinal sin for me is getting a takeaway drink and it scalds me. And the reason it scalds me is because they're heating it to the normal temperature. That's right. The paper cup doesn't cool it and that's not how they're testing it. 65 Celsius drink that's normally 50, 55 yeah. in the mouth is actually 65 in the paper cup. If you're a cafe, you should be keeping in your head, takeaway drink, steam 10 centigrade, Cooler. So another reason to have one of these. And in general, you'd have someone giving you direct feedback. Like this is too cold. Yeah, this is too cold. <laughs> Make or it again. <laughs> it's burning my tongue, and you know you're steaming too hot. I think also when people ask for that extra hot latte, <laughs> and you as a barista know you know, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. What you can do is use a thermometer and push it to the absolute edge, right? <laughs> you stop at 68 Celsius. You know you haven't adulterated the milk. It's as hot as you morally can actually respect <laughs> yourself. There are other things like you can preheat the ceramic cup to mm. get that extra little bit of heat in there without being detrimental to the quality. If you do have that guest that maybe wants it a bit hotter, then you can have that opportunity to explain um, how it may change the product and how it may affect flavor. Right. Don't be shy about it, but you know, <laughs> have the opportunity to enlighten people and just gear them towards what, what good quality milk will be. What happened is I started buying every thermometer I could find. <laughs> and, and I actually had the same obsession because I was really into roasting meat and I had all these thermometers and they would bust or they weren't that accurate and I'd have like three thermometers in my steak and there was a German company just made the best steak thermometers. I had an oven thermometer from them oh, okay. and it lasted for years. All the other ones died. So what I did is I approached them and I said, can you change according to my spec your meat thermometer so we can use it for milk? That's what I'm holding here. This is a German design, German made meat thermometer been revised to use for milk. So they shortened the temperature probe, we put the silicone sleeve around it, we changed the temperature range, but it's essentially that right. excellent made in Germany thermometer. That's how we came to this product. We didn't invent our own thermometer. I don't think we're good enough to make a world-class thermometer, but we are good <laughs> enough to pay someone else. So that's how we came to this. It's pretty simple in its operation. When this thermometer reaches 52 Celsius, it's going to start beeping, and Paul here is going to pull the milk jug off, and then we're gonna see what the end temperature is. And my goal is gonna be something like 56, 57 degrees. Um, I think that that's the latency on this, there's also a little latency in Paul's hand movement and brain, which is as soon as he hears the beep, then he's going to hit the stop and he's going to pull the milk jug off. So we have to include digital latency and human latency in uh, whatever thermometer temperature we do. You can put them in like this, give them a tap, 
and then the whole thing is locked in place. So this is set at 52. So you can see that when Paul was steaming, he heard the beep, he pressed the button, it was probably 53, 54 Celsius by the time he pressed the button, and then a few seconds later, we let it sit in front of the camera, and it ended up at 56, 57 degrees. Factor in something like four or five Celsius more rising yeah. after you hear the beep, when you've got that target temperature in mind. So if you want the heat to 65, you actually should have it beep at 60 so that the end resting temperature is there. And the milk thermometer slides out like this. It's easy enough to clean. So I think it's very cool that you can kind of even adjust the actual set temperature it beeps at. Even if your motions are a little bit slower, you can just program in a little bit less, mm -hmm. at like more than five degrees and account for that slower time that you're removing your jug and you'll still get yourself pretty accurately uh, to your target goal. Even if it's set with set temperatures, you can customize it to your own workflow. And I think that makes it very, very versatile. Mm -hmm. There is a Celsius model and a Fahrenheit model for people who do that sort of thing. What kind of temperature would be an ideal for you, say, cappuccino or latte? Cappuccino or latte, I wouldn't have as hot as uh, all the way up to 65, but that's just generally according to my taste, being medium to medium light or light. And that pairs well with the style of shot I'm producing, which is not as sweet as, let's say, a darker roast. So I would like my milk to counteract that a little bit more and produce more sweetness. So I would generally have it closer to 55, 60, with the ending cup a little bit lower than that using ceramics. So you feel that if you're making a milk drink with a light roast bean, you should have a lower milk temperature yes. than you might do with a chocolate or a darker roast bean. That's right. And what would be a five centigrade, sort of 10 Fahrenheit difference? Um, yeah, I think it would be five to 10, depending on how accurate I am with my hand, of course. But yeah, I think it would be in that range, yes, okay. for sure. Um, any tips if you're steaming alternative milks, nut milks or oatly or any of that stuff? I would suggest to stretch more gently with those type of milks simply because the protein levels are a lot lower. Let's take a sample for soya milk where the proteins are very different to dairy. But my recommendation would be to get uh, barista style milks or cafe style milks, which have been formulated to make it a little bit easier during the stretch and obviously pouring as well. So it just makes that a little bit more presentable and in general, they're a little bit sweeter as well. I found with non-dairy milks that if you're using something that has a long list of ingredients and it's the ingredient list in the container is the size of your hand, then probably you can steam at any temperature you want. It'll always be fantastic. And that's because a whole bunch of chemists have ensured that they've put the stuff in to make sure that it steams no matter how bad the barista is. And I've seen actually uh, in some Instagram videos, latte artists using alternative milks, I think because it makes this lush, foamy perfection no matter what you do. If you are, however, into alternative milks that have a restricted list of ingredients, often the emulsion is pretty fragile. And this is especially the case that I found with nut milks. Nut milks will tend to split at about 60 Celsius. So look on that ingredient list. If you don't see any stabilizer, you really want to keep that temperature down. And there's this real danger zone. And it's almost like mixing, say, cream and something acidic yes. and suddenly it splits yeah. Yeah. and then you have curds and whey. You have nut milk because nut milk is really oils and suspension and water and they've managed through some processing magic, keep it as a suspension, but it is fragile. That people taste more as the temperature goes down to 30 Celsius. At 30 Celsius, lowering the temperature anymore doesn't increase any more flavor. But it's absolutely the case that at 50, you will taste less than at 40 Celsius. These cafes that have really expensive, gorgeous coffee, it kind of bothers them that they're heating it and then you can't taste at that temperature they're at. And so they've been pushing the temperatures down yeah. to try and respect the coffee. And I would say uneducated clientele may protest that this is not my warm coffee beverage. I would say have a discussion then with your barista yeah. as to which you want, which you want more warmth, or do you want more flavor? And if you're doing this at home, that's this inner dialogue you need to have with yourself. I use an ember mug, which keeps it temperature. And then what that allows me to do is heat to a lower temperature and then sustain that temperature. So I keep my ember at 50 Celsius. Oh, lovely. And then I only have to heat my milk to 50 and it stays there. I don't have to overheat, so I have a warm drink to the end. So I'd say having a self-heating coffee mug that keeps it 
the best temperature that you like, paired with the milk temperature, and you are on warm milk drink nirvana. Thank you for watching this deep dive into the decent milk thermometer, and let us know in the comments what you think of it. Thanks very much. Thank you.